freaking out because you're here. I'm so free. I, I, I've been like, you know, you dress for a date. Like I've been dressing for, I was like, she will, do you think she'll like this? Oh my God. Oh my God. I'll be your date. <laughs> please do. Please do. I'm doing nothing after this. What are you doing? Let's go. Um, well, you are married to like <laughs> the most special guy ever. Sterling K. Special. Brown. He's very special. He's very special. <laughs> now, is it true? He told me a story about when you guys like first met and then you got like back together. Is that, yeah. what's your side of the story? No, we did. My husband and I met and we have gotten back together several times <laughs> over the course of like, <laughs> I don't know how many years. There was, there was a lot of uh, breakups to makeups. So it got to the point where we both had to be like, you know what, we should just try being adults about this. And that worked, funny enough. <laughs> Being adults, being adults. We were, and that's actually the thing that he said that when one of the, the last time that we found our way back to each other, he said, I think the reason why I've been dating all of these other girls is because I keep looking for you and they're not you. Exactly, and that was the thing that made me go, oh, okay. You can say a little bit more about that. They're not me. Say it again, <laughs> a little louder, you know? But it was very, very sweet. And that was the moment that I was like, okay, we can, let's talk like adults. And I mean, you know, it's so interesting because you grow up so much. Like, I'm so different than I was a decade ago, five years ago. I know, I know, I know. And I then know. it's a matter of how do we learn to grow together? Yes. I suppose, and you did, you figured it out. Yeah, well, there, there was a, I, there's a little secret to my success as trying to be married and the kids and all this stuff. And it's a little movie called Irreconcilable Differences. Oh my God, I'm in that. Really? <laughs> yes. I play a seven-year-old girl who tries to divorce her parents. I, I am, I, I chapter and verse that movie. And I would, and I'm an only child, and you were an only child. And I would look at that movie, and I'd be like, she's speaking to me. You're like the most incredible child in that movie. You're, you're so good and you're so well behaved and all you want is your parents to like notice. And, and I just remember thinking like, I have to be a better parent. <laughs> like this movie is teaching me how to be a good parent. So That's, I'm so, so glad it did that. <laughs> it did, it really did, I swear to God. Go watch that movie. But it teaches you that like little kids are watching and they're not as, you know, dumb as, you. they're innocent, but they're not dumb. And they're there's a difference, you know what I mean? Everything. They're watching everything. And your mom was a disco queen? And my mom, in all of this, my mother's, you know, a disco queen. And she had a <laughs> song, um, like, that was on the top 100 for like 10 weeks in a row. Which they just told me today, I didn't even know that. I didn't even, yeah, 10 weeks in a row. Isn't that crazy? That's I didn't crazy. Even know that. What was yeah. it like growing up with a disco mama? Because I love disco. I love disco too. Maybe that's why I love disco because I was. It's like in my. It's truly in my blood. It's in my bones. As a matter of fact, we lived across the street from Studio Fifty Four. Oh um, my God! I used to go to Studio Fifty Four when I was like seven through ten. Oh, I know. I know. I have used that argument to get my mom to take me to Studio. I was like, Drew Barrymore is there, and she's that's like, Well, right. when Drew Barrymore's parents, and I was like, Oh, okay, never mind. And she was also in a um, a Broadway show called Lena Horn Show, The Lady and Her Music. Yeah, of course. And yeah, and so I grew up backstage on Broadway. I mean, that's all I, I knew. And so backstages and the backstage mic and I would sing on the backstage and I was like this high and it was, you know, and I would, so that's all I knew. And I, I think, I think the good part is that I never attached myself to the glamour of what it was like to be on stage. I always attached myself to the glamour of what it was like to be off stage. You know, like, oh. I did too. Do. I did too. Right? Yeah. You know, and like, the idea that you are a part of a company, yes. that you're responsible to these other people, you're yes. responsible to these other women that, and I've seen women like give each other bras and chicken cut, you know, the little things you put in your, and like, and, 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 and um, fix each other's, girl, your, 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 you know, your eyelash is falling down. Thank you, girl. Like I saw that yes. part of it. And that's what I fell in love with, the community, the camaraderie and the work. I knew that it was work. I knew that you had to stretch and, and, and warm up before you got on that stage. And so that's the part that I think I remember the most and not the glamour of it. I love that. That's such a good fundamental for life. <laughs>